Hi, my name is Jacob Liam Marino, and today I'm going to be teaching you the first steps in 3D printing, slicing your prints. <music> 3D printing is an incredible technology that can turn a roll of filament like this into a piece like this. It does so by taking material like this PLA, melting it to over 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and extruding it through the printer's hot end. Before we can print on the printer, we have to make the file to print. This is where a slicer comes in. We use Prusa Slicer, a program that takes digital 3D models and turns them into printing instructions for a given 3D printer. We have Prusa Slicer on any one of these lab computers. Feel free to hop on one that's free when you come in. In addition to the model itself, the instructions contain user-inputted 3D printing parameters, such as layer height, speed, and support structure settings. Now, if you're new to 3D printing and words like filament and slicer are confusing to you, don't fret. You'll get more 3D printing experience through videos like this and eventual printing experience. In the fabrication lab, our printers are from a brand called Prusa, or Prusa. It's Czech. Back to slicing your prints. First, you're going to want to open up Prusa Slicer on one of these computers and import your model. There are a few different file types for 3D printing, all of which come from different softwares and have different qualities. Prusa Slicer accepts four different file types for 3D printing. STL, OBJ, 3MF, and AMF. Most of the time, you'll be using STLs for your prints. STL stands for Standard Tessellation Language, which is a hard word for me to say, or Standard Triangle Language. That basically means that files are made up of a whole bunch of different tessellated triangles. Back to printing. Once you have your file to print pulled up, you can click and drag it into the slicer, like this. If you haven't played with any 3D modeling programs before, orienting in 3D space can be a little tricky, and it will take some getting used to. Here are the controls. First, this is our build plate. This is a digital representation of this real life build plate that your print will go on. To rotate 360 degrees from the center point on screen, left click and drag around, like this. To change what portion of the plate you're looking at, hold down your mouse wheel or right click and move like this. To zoom in and out, use your scroll wheel. Again, moving in 3D space can be tricky, but with practice, you'll get it. So here's our model. Yours may be in the correct orientation when you import it. That's great. Or it may be like this, which is bad. To orient your model, first left click on the model. This highlights it. Then, go to the Rotate button on this sidebar. When clicked, it shows rotations for three axes, X, Y, and Z. Adjust the position of the model by manually moving these arrows. If you need a specific coordinate position, input units into this box on the right. Finally, if you know what side or face of the model you want to print on the bed, which most of the time is the most flat part, click this really useful face on place button on the left side of the screen and choose which highlighted side you want on the print bed. You can scale your model by left clicking on the object and clicking on the scale button on the left. Multiple boxes are now seen on screen. We can select different boxes to scale different axes. You can play around with all of the boxes to get a feel for the setting. In order to scale your whole model equally, left click and drag one of these four orange boxes. Additionally, if you know by what percentage you need to reduce your object or size up, you can enter those values As long as this lock is on, it will scale all axes equally. 
The settings are in the top right corner of the screen right here. This is where we can select print settings, filament type, and printer type. Select Fab Lab default from the list. This default setting prints at 0.2 millimeters layer height. We will check your model before printing, and we will look for this before proceeding, so make sure you use this setting. Select Fab Lab PLA. For the printer, the choice will always be the original Prusa Mini and Mini Plus. 15% infill will be adequate for most all projects. Keep it on this default setting. Again, if your project requires something different, ask a staff member. What are supports? Let's say I needed to print this letter T. If I was to print this model in the typical orientation that you'd normally read a letter T, we'd need a lot of support material. Why? The printer can't print in midair. Once it gets to this top section, it has nothing to support it, and the print would fail. Support material is needed once parts of your model go past about a 50 degree angle. We add support material by clicking on Supports and clicking Everywhere. This adds support for each section that goes over 50 degrees. This is the optimal orientation for a print like this. My print now needs no supports whatsoever. Taking a look at the print times and material usage between these two parts shows a dramatic difference. Some models may need supports when printing, and that's okay, but if you need to do this, you'll have to restart the slicing process. All you have to do is click this box in the bottom left corner here. Now you can readjust your model and the Fab Lab default settings will be kept. Now, once your model is ready to print, let someone at the front desk know and they will bring you a silver Prusa Mini USB. Plug it into the computer tower located under the desk. Click Export G-Code and save it to this USB. Name your file, last name, print time. and click Save. Eject your USB by clicking this Eject button in the bottom right corner. Your model's correct orientation depends on what you're printing. We've shown you how to orient your model, but your model's optimal orientation will depend on an amalgamation of factors, such as reducing support material, print strength, and making sure your print doesn't print in midair. We'll go over a few more of these things as the video continues. Next, print setting. If your print requires different printing parameters for strength or functionality needs, ask a staff member and they can help you. But for most all prints, this is a good layer height to go with. In the fabrication lab, we use PLA to print 99% of the time. It's a consistent material, it's great, and your project will probably be fine printed in PLA. If you have specific needs or need to bring in a different material for us to use, let a staff member know and we can help you. Now, before we print, we have to address one of the trickier parts of 3D printing, supports. Support material adds time to your print and waste material that gets thrown away after the print is done. You want to avoid this if possible. There is a way to get around this, and that is optimal orientation of your model. The golden rule, orient your model to use the least amount of support material possible. Once everything is ready to print, click Slice Now in the bottom right corner. Boom. Prusa Slicer has now made the digital code to take your model from a digital model into a physical object on the printer. At the bottom right of our screen, we now see the print statistics. The most important number here is print time. Because the Fab Lab serves such a large audience for 3D printing, we try to limit prints to six hours at most. If you have a specific need, like a capstone project or a model that you've designed fully yourself, we can be flexible with those print times ask a staff member. But again, try to keep it under six hours, if possible. 